What's up guys, it's Mr. Comer here and I'd like to welcome you to uh, the forensics topics of this week. This week we're going to be looking at fingerprints and I'd like you to use this video um, to complete your class notes for the week. All right. So um, when we're looking at fingerprints, it's important to remember these three fundamental principles. All right. First, a fingerprint is an individual characteristic which we looked into last week, uh, which means that no two people have ever been found to have the exact same fingerprint pattern. Therefore, a fingerprint pattern will remain unchanged for the life of an individual unless the print itself is damaged by some sort of permanent scar or skin disease. The last thing is, when we're looking at fingerprints, we're actually looking at the tiny little raises on the finger itself. And these raises are known as ridges. So by looking at the ridge pattern and the detail on those ridges, we can identify this fingerprint to a specific individual. All right. There are three classes of fingerprints, and we're gonna go into a little bit of detail about them and how to identify them. But essentially, when we look at our fingerprint, it can either be an arch, a loop, or a whirl. And there are different categories within those types. Um, here's a typical arch pattern, and there are two types of arches. They're called plain arches and tented arches. Um, this is a loop pattern, and we are going to be looking at um, very closely in the, in the next slide on how to determine whether or not it's a radial loop or an ulnar loop. And then this is a whirl pattern, or kind of a circular pattern, and these are the most common. And there are um, a couple of different types, plain whirl and central pocket whirl, which we're going to focus on. But um, occasionally we'll see what's called a double whirl or an accidental whirl. Real quick, interesting information. 60% um, of the people on the planet have loops. 35% uh, have whirls and 5% have arches. And knowing those percentages is going to be important in lab this week when we're calculating um, using the product rule and um, classifying individuals based on their character, fingerprint characteristics. Um, and we also know from this that arches are the least common, whereas loops are the most common. All right. So let's take a quick look at what arches are. Arches are the simplest type of fingerprints, and essentially are formed by a ridge, or one of these lines, that enters into the fingerprint on one side and exits on the other. All right. So it's a single straight line that goes from one side to the other. And the only difference between a plain arch and a tented arch is that you can follow this line and it's got kind of a more exaggerated spiky tent. These are very rare. Um, so if you have one, when we're doing it in lab this week, shout it out. It's kind of neat if you have a rare arch or tented arch fingerprint. All right, loops are a little tricky. All right. Essentially what happens here is a loop has what's called a delta. All right, a delta is this triangular shape that exists in the fingerprint. And you can see it here is that triangular shape. And what that triangular shape does is it makes one of these ridges that enters on one side hit that delta and then exit on the same side, all right? And then whether or not you have what's called an ulnar loop or a radial loop is gonna determine which hand you have and which side that loop or that arch is entering and exiting. So here we go, here's my hand and here's my thumb. You find your thumb, your thumb is attached to your radius. I know it's a little messed up here, so. The radius is the bone that attaches to the thumb and I always remember that the radius rotates. So when you look at your thumb, it seems to kind of rotate like that. So if I had a fingerprint that is entering on the right side of my left hand, entering and exiting on the same side, I would know that it's going towards my thumb, and therefore it would be a radial loop. Let's take a look at my right hand. My radius now is down here. If I had a loop entering on the right side of my right hand and exiting, it wouldn't be going towards my radius, it'd be going towards my ulna. Therefore, it'd be an ulna loop. So when you're looking at loops, you look at the delta, see which way that um, shape, uh, that arch is kind of coming in and leaving, and then try to orient yourself based on the location of your radius, which we now know goes to the thumb and rotates. All right, so that's how you find your radius. Your radius rotates. And as you can see, I broke my radius, and that's why some people ask me, why did you wear that, Mr. Comer? Well, I wear that because I broke my radius. All right. Whirls um, are a type of fingerprint that you will find to have, it's a little out of here, um, two deltas. So here you can find a delta right there, and you can find a delta down here, and here's another example. So by having two deltas, what that, ha what that makes is um, kind of a circular pattern in the middle between those two deltas. And the only difference in a plain whirl and a central pocket whirl is that um, the central pocket whirl um, is going to be a little bit smaller. Meaning if we go, take a line from the two deltas and you find this pocket right in the middle, kind of above the two deltas, um, you have a central pocket whirl. If you have kind of this whirl that drops below the two deltas, which is much more common, um, you have what's called a plane whirl. Right. So um, 
The last thing is, occasionally you'll see some kind of, I find these very beautiful when people show them to me, um, a double world. So that's um, two worlds that are occurring at the same time. And sometimes people have like this muddy composition, right? So it looks like we have kind of like an arch here, but there's some like whirling up here and there's no real deltas. We just call that an accidental world. There's no real pattern. Um, it doesn't really fall into any different categories, so we just call it an accident, all right? Um, so you're gonna take some time now to um, identify each of the uh, patterns here. And um, that's gonna be an, it for this video, but you're gonna use the link in, um, to access the rest of this presentation and um, complete your notes about latent prints, um, the detection of latent fingerprints, and a little closer look at um, fingerprint ridgeology or the identification of minutia that helps us identify uh, fingerprint systems. So you're gonna do that part on your own. Um, I'm gonna end this video now. Um, complete your notes today, and uh, the rest of this week we're gonna be looking at some case studies and uh, doing laboratory activities. So um, with that, I'm gonna leave you enjoy the music. Na, 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 na.